In this tutorial, we will explore how to create this UI screen using the React app. To build this React app, we will use a front-end tool called Vite. It is a powerful tool that enables us to create multiple front-end projects. However, for this tutorial, we will use Vite React. To install React using Vite, we need to execute a specific command. Let's go to our editor an empty folder, where we will install the React application. After pasting the command and executing it, we will be prompted to select our project name. Since we want to create it in the current folder, we will type dot. We will create a JavaScript version of the application. However, if you want to create a TypeScript version of the React application, you can select it here. Then we will run the npm install and run the dev server. Excellent! We have just created our React application. Vite has provided us with the basic folder structure and installed all the necessary packages to run a React application. Now we want to create our UI using Bootstrap. This will give us a hands-on experience of how to use Bootstrap in a React application. To achieve this, we need to install two packages. Bootstrap and React Bootstrap. We can find all the information regarding all the components we can use inside the React Bootstrap documentation. However, it is recommended to use Bootstrap's official website documentation, since the search functionality for Bootstrap's website is better. Before building our components, let's take some time to understand Bootstrap and its classes. In Bootstrap, we can achieve everything using classes. So the few major things that we need are rows and columns. In Bootstrap, we can structure everything using rows and columns. A column is the vertical position of elements and rows are the horizontal position of the elements. Columns will be nested inside a row. In this example, we can see there are two rows and two columns. Columns are nested inside a row. In general, Bootstrap uses a 12 column grid. We can arrange the columns in these 12 columns. If we don't define anything, by default, all the columns will take equal space in a row. In this example, we are telling this child to take eight columns, so the remaining two children will take the remaining four columns. We can define columns per breakpoint. We need 12 columns in mobile, but we want eight in medium and so on. We can see all the available breakpoints in Bootstrap's documentation. The second major thing that we are going to use is spacing. We can search for padding or margin in Bootstrap's documentation and it will show everything. The class name for margin starts with M and for padding, it's P. After this first letter, we have to define how much space we want to apply. The numbers start from 0 to 5, which we can see in the documentation. 0 means no spacing, whereas 5 is the highest spacing. We can customize these values if we need to. So, when we define P4 or M4, it applies this for space on all sides. If we want to specify a particular side, like left or top, then we can use these additional classes like T for top, B for bottom, S for start or left, E for end or right, Y for top and bottom, X for left and right. So if we want to have a margin top of 4, we have to give the class as MT4. Apart from that, we are going to use some forms because if we see our UI, we have two input fields and a submit button. In Bootstrap, we have forms. This is how we should define a form. We need to wrap the root inside a form. Then, there is a form group, which has a label input field with type and help or error messages. For now, we need these things, but Bootstrap provides so many classes utilities out of the box. Please check their documentation for any additional things. We can achieve most of the CSS things using Bootstrap, but sometimes we need to write our custom CSS. For that, we will use SCSS. Let's install SAS in our application as a dev dependency. Our first task is to build the necessary components for our application. We'll start by creating a form that includes input fields and a button. To get started, we need to launch our application and let me arrange the windows so that we can see both screens together. Next, we'll clean up everything and create a simple file. We'll remove all the other files, leaving only what we need.
The first step is to import the Bootstrap CSS into our application. We need to add it to our app file. In addition, I want to add a dark theme. If we can't find much information in the React documentation, we can always refer to the Bootstrap documentation. We can find what we're looking for there. We need to define the data attribute on the root level. So we'll navigate to our index.yml file and add it to our body tag. We'll then be able to see the dark theme. Our next step is to create a new folder called Components and create a file called Date Picker. Inside, we'll import our rows and columns, which we discussed earlier, as well as a button component from Bootstrap. Finally, we'll add a form. Our UI will have two rows. The first row will have two input columns. Inside the form will have a row. The first column will have a form group with a label for the from date and an input field with the type date, as we need a date picker and a placeholder. Then we'll have another column with the to date. In the second row we'll need a submit button. We'll import this file into our app and we'll see the UI. I want to have some padding around it, so we'll add a div with class P3. Now let's move on to our second component. This widget will show the total spending occurring in that transaction period with a gradient background. We'll create a new component called Total Widget. Inside, it's a simple widget where we'll return some string and a total value. We'll import it into our app file and add some break tags to have some spacing. We need a box with some spaces and we can define all the UI using bootstrap classes but for the gradient background we have to use custom styles. We'll create a new file called totalwidget.module.css. The file name should always end with module.css to indicate that it's custom styles. We'll add a class name called gradient background. We can use a website like webgradients.css to get some CSS gradient colors. We'll copy the CSS and paste it. Then, we'll add this class to our component. To do this, we need to import this CSS file and give the class name as styles. and whatever the class name we gave in our file. We'll test it out. We have to install SAS, so we'll install that. Finally, we want our text to be dark, so we'll give a class text dark. If we have doubts about which class to use, we can always refer to the Bootstrap documentation. We'll make our text centered and we'll add rounded corners to the card. We also want to have top and bottom padding. Now let's move on to the UI. We're showing a list of transactions. This widget has multiple transactions and each transaction has the name of the item followed by the count. The number of times we purchased that item in that period and the total amount we spent on that item. Finally, we'll show how much each item costs. It can be multiple values since item values change over the period. To get started, we'll create a new component called List of Transactions JSX. We'll add some dummy data from which we'll create these transactions. It's an object with a key name as the item name and quantity, total, and price list as an array. We'll loop through all the items. The first parameter is the key name, which we don't need, and the second item will be an object. First, we'll return the item name followed by the quantity and then the total. If there are more than two decimals, we'll show a maximum of two. Finally, we'll loop through all the price lists and return the individual price. Let's test it out by importing it into our app. We can see some transactions. We need to add a border bottom for each item. On the root level, we should add a border, rounder corners, and also text center. To give each item Y padding,
We need to add some padding for that. Once this is done, we can see that the UI looks quite neat, but we still need rounded badges for prices. To add these badges, we can search for badges in Bootstrap. We have different colors available, but we will use the primary color for now. We can add these classes to each price item and also add some margin right to each item. We finish it the UI. Now let's integrate the transaction API that we created in our previous tutorial. To do this, we will need to import the state from React. We will create a state to set the loading state for the application when we are getting transactions. We will also create a state that holds the final information that we need. We need the total to show inside the total widget component and list of transactions. To get the data from our server, we will create a method. First, we will keep our loading state as true, and then we will make a GET request. We will use fetch to make the API call. This is the URL that we deployed in our previous tutorial, which we have to pass from and to dates that we will take as input parameters. Since we are making a fetch call, we have to convert our response to text so that we can read it. We will then get the data out of it. And for now, let's log it to see what we are getting. If there is any error, we will log that as well. Finally, we will set our loading state to false. Before testing this out, whenever we click on the submit button, we have to take the dates from the input and pass them to our fetch data function. To add this functionality, we will listen to the changes in the input values. For that, on our controller, we will listen, and whenever the value changes, we will call the update date method with the first argument as to which date we want to update, whether it's the to date or from date. The second argument will be the selected value. We will create a state to hold these from and to date values. The form will hold the from and to date values, and we can update the values using this set form. We will have an initial value as empty. Now let's create the method update date, which takes the first argument as the field, which field value we want to update, whether it's from or to, and the second parameter as the value we want to update. If there is no value, we will return. If there is a value, we will call our set form by passing the previous values first and then updating the field with the new value. Let's say from input is changed, then we will take previous values in the state first, and then we will override from value to the newly passed value. Now, let's add a method when we click on submit. This function prevents the form from being reloaded. And for now, let's alert the values from our state. After testing it out, we can see both the dates. Now, when we submit, we have to pass on this value to our app, JSX file. So let's pass on a callback function that we want to trigger whenever the date is changed. This method takes the dates that we are getting and it will simply pass this information to the fetch data method. Inside the date picker, let's accept this callback function as a parameter. On submit of our form, let's call this callback with the dates. To avoid confusion, let's call this method as on date change app. So whenever there is a date change, we are calling this callback function, which in turn calls this on date change app function which calls the fetch API. Let's test it out by selecting the date, specifically September 1st, as we know that there are some transactions in our Firebase database for that date. We can see we are triggering the API with the proper parameters, but we can see a course error, which means that the server is not accepting requests from the current URL. To fix this quickly, we will need to make some changes to our server code. We will go to the server's starting file and install a package called cause. We will simply import it and tell the express IP to use it. For now, we will allow all requests, but we can specify which domains to accept to improve security. Once we have made the necessary changes, we will push our new code and Versal will automatically deploy it for us. If you want to learn more about how we built and deployed this server, please check out the previous tutorials in the description. Now that we have fixed the course error, we can test the API. We can see the data, but we need to pass it to extract the information we need, which is the total amount and the list of transactions.
To do this, we will create a new method called process the data. This method will loop through all the transactions and calculate the total amount by adding up all the transaction amounts. Then, it will loop through all the items in each transaction and check if the item already exists in our list of items. If it does, we will increase the quantity and total of the item. And if the price of the item is not in the price list, we will add it. If the item is not already on the list, we will check if the item has a price. If it doesn't, we will take the total value if the quantity is 1. And then we will add the new item with the name, price list, quantity and total to our list of items. Finally, we will update our store. This structure is the same as our list of transaction method expects, so we will pass this information to the respective components. We will pass the total to the total widget and the items to the list of transactions and update the components to use these values. Awesome, we can see the final data updating in our components. Now let's add a small loader when we are fetching the data. We will search for a loader in our Bootstrap documentation and use a spinner. We will pass the loading state to the Toto widget component and if it's loading, we will show the loading state. Otherwise, we will show the total value. Amazing, we can see the loading state. With all these changes in place, we are now able to pass a grocery receipt using our Telegram bot, upload our data to Firebase and build a small UI to see the list of transactions. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and we look forward to seeing you in the next project. Until next time, my friend.